Hello again, this is Mr. Butler. Um, in today's video, I'm looking at the concept of rounding. Lots of people know the process for rounding, but I wanted to go over exactly what's going on when we're rounding. So let's start with an example. Um, I'm going to start with a scale on the left hand side, and that's going to be very helpful. So to start with, we're rounding to the nearest whole number uh, and we have 6.6. .6 that's what we're rounding and we want to round that to the nearest whole number when we're rounding we are so when we're rounding we're working out which of two numbers and a number is closest to that's going to make sense when i fill in my scale so 6.6 .6 could be either round down to six or round up to seven those are the two whole numbers that 6.6 .6 is in between um so let's look at the number 6.6 .6. on our scale it's there we can tell just by looking at it having drawn it in this way, that number is closer to seven than to six. So we're going to round up to seven. Now, we might not always have a scale and sometimes it might not be easy to visualize which number it'd go to. So there's also something else we can do to remind ourselves of which way it's going to round. What I like to do is, because I know we're rounding to the nearest whole number, I'm going to draw a line after the whole number, which is six in this case. Then I'm going to look at the number, the digit after that line, which in this case is six. I've drawn a box around that digit. Six is the digit that determines whether we round up or down. Because six is greater than five, five is our cutoff, we round up, okay? So 6.6, .6, .6, we round to seven. Let's have a look at another example now, 6.1. Now for 6.1, I don't need to change my scale at all. It's still rounding to the nearest whole number and it's still between six and seven. 6.1 on my scale will be there. And as we can see, that's closer to six than seven. If I do my method again, I draw my line after the six. One is less than five, so we're going to round down. So we know that 6.1 rounds to six and I've shown you that in two ways. Firstly, on the scale with the left-hand side, it's closer to the six at the bottom than the seven at the top. And secondly, by drawing the line, the box and the arrow, we also know it rounds down. Um, so let's move on from rounding to the nearest whole number to rounding to one decimal place now. So 1.27, again, I'm going to fill in my scale, but this time, because I'm not rounding to a whole number, I'm not going to put one and two. I'm going to put 1.2 and 1.3 on my scale because I'm either going to round down to 1.2 or round up to 1.3. So 1.27, if I draw that in on my scale, uh, that'll be there. And we can see, looking at that, it's gonna be closer to 1.3 than 1.2. So that's where we're going to round. We're going to round up to 1.3. Also with my line, my box and my arrow, seven is the digit that I'm interested in. Seven is bigger than five, so we are rounding up. Now let's take another example. Let's take the example of 1.23. Again, we can see it's closer to 1.2 than 1.3, so it's going to round down to 1.2. If we draw the line in the box, three is less than five, so we're rounding down again to 1.2. The same answer because it's two ways of working out the same thing. Now let's take another example of rounding to one decimal place. If we have the number 4.14, that could either round down to 4.1 or up to 4.2. If I draw it in on my scale, we can see that it's closer to 4.1 than it is to 4.2. So we're going to round, we're going to round down. Also, if I draw my line after the one decimal place, so I'm going to draw my box around the next digit, which is the four, four rounds down. So it's going to be 4.1. Now, slightly different question, a question that I get quite a lot. Why do we round up and not down for five? Now, it hasn't been written in the laws of the universe that we must round up for five and down for anything below five, but there is a, a good practical explanation for why we do this. Let's take the number 6.500009. Now, this is going to be closer to seven than it is to six. So we know that's going to round up. It's above the cutoff point, it's above halfway. So we're going to round up, okay? And that would round up to seven because it's closer to seven than to six. Now the number that we're not sure about, the cutoff number is 6.5, because that looks like it's exactly halfway in between. Now let's suppose that instead of rounding up, which is what we do do, in a different universe, we rounded 6.5 down. So 6.500000 would also round down. Those extra zeros don't change the way that we round. So that number, 
we round down to six. The reason we don't do that is if we now compare these two numbers, the first one, we round up to seven. The second one, we round to down to six. This would lead to problems because we like to just look at the first digit. However, we wouldn't be able to do this if we rounded down for the digit five. We wouldn't be able to do it. And that's demonstrated by this example here. We'd have to look at the very small digits to determine whether we need to round up or down. That's a practical explanation of why we round up for five as opposed to rounding down. It just means we only ever need to look at the first digit after the line that we've drawn rather than all down the line. Okay, thank you guys. I hope this has been a helpful reminder on the topic of rounding.